Wrong button. <laughs> Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to a new video on settings for single player. Today, I'm going to walk you through the settings on how to set up uh, the settings that I use or also uh, what some of the different settings mean going into setting up your single player game. Now, I realize there's going to be a lot of people that are coming into single player a lot of times for the first time. And I want to make sure that you know what most of the settings are. There's going to be a few of them that I can't really go into too much depth on because we don't want this to be an hour-long video. But for the most part, a lot of this stuff, uh, yeah, let's pop on into it and let's see just what all we can. All right, so now when you're first opening this up for the first time, you will not have any of these little boxes right here on the side. Now, these right here, these are your save game files. Uh, this right here, say if I were to click that, it would delete my island save game. So you want to make sure that you only click that button if you want to start over from scratch and you want all of your progress to be wiped. That basically just goes in and it deletes the save file that you have inside of your save game. So, yeah, click that only if you absolutely want to. All right, now right here, if you're setting up mods, you're going to have up here, this says uh, the ARC sponsored mods. These are direct links. And then this right here will take you to the Steam Workshop. And then you'll also be able to update your mods through this right here. Now, if you want to add mods, I normally don't use mods on my single player, but I know a lot of people really want to try out a bunch of mods. Uh, so, yeah, the, if you'll come down here. You'll load up all your mods. These are the ones I use on my Patreon servers. And uh, all you do is just take these, you drag it up here, and then you set them in the correct order. Now, the order at which they are loaded does matter. So make sure that if you've got one that really changes the game, that it is at the top of the list, and then the other ones that will modify it as it goes. All right, so that's, that's mods. All right, now over here, you'll notice that all of the uh, regular story mode uh, arcs, they're listed up here. Now, if you have any custom ones that are added in via um, just mods or um, just the oh, the ones that Wildcard put out that they had mod makers do for them and then they become official maps, those will be found down here. All right, now, coming down through here, uh, I don't change up a lot of the uh, difficulty settings and such like that. I max it out uh, to 1.0, and then I kind of just leave it. I don't... When I'm playing single player, I want to have almost the exact same experience that you have on just the way the, the game developers intended. But also, I like to speed it up because when you're playing on single player, you're playing by yourself. And you don't have the benefit of having a tribe mates that can, you know, help... Uh, you know, watch your babies that are growing up. And when you go out and you uh, start harvesting a bunch of materials, it's just you. You don't have, you know, you can't just send out Bob to go, you know, with the Anki and the whip to go grab thousands of metal and then come back while you're in the base gathering up wood and stuff like that. No, this is all you. So uh, I design everything pretty much according to that. So where you have the traditional arc experience, it's just sped up. And that's it. That's the design that I'm going for. I don't like to go with anything overpowered or anything of the sort. So when it comes down to difficulty level, it's at 1.0. Dino damage, player damage, all that stuff is at 1.0. XP multiplier. This one right here, I like to have this. Uh, when I first start off in the game, I will actually take this. And I will put this down to about 0.25. There have been a few times where I will actually take this and put this all the way down to 0001. Yeah, and that right there really crawls down the game. If you go on 0, uh, 0.25, this right here is the original 1.0. Uh, Arcs XP has gained. You, over the years, you gain regular XP. They've doubled the amount that you get, and then they doubled it again. So 0.25 is the original amount. So if you w go like this, you're actually running at times 4 XP. <laughs> yes. So, uh, yeah, use this accordingly. I like to go with... Uh, lower XP just in the early game because I love the early game. I like to stretch it out a little bit just because I think the early game is so fun. You're going on, you're getting your Parasaurs, your Ankies, uh, your Dodicruses, uh, Trike Matters, and I don't like to speed through that very much. So I like to make sure that my XP is really low, like 0 0.25, 0 0.10, so it's like 10% of the regular XP, and then just enjoy the early levels. Once I hit about level 65, 70, 
70, sometimes 75. I'll bump this up to 1.0 because getting those last levels to get up towards the uh, um, boss fights, the alpha boss fights where you're, it's required that you're level 100, that can take a while at point 25. So when I get up to about level 70, 75, I'll move this up to 1.0. So I'm just getting regular XP going up to 100. All right. Uh, taming speed. Now, the taming speed, you can actually have this up to, you know, four, six. I go with three because it's not too fast. You still have the difficulty of knocking out something out in the wild and have to worry about something coming and smacking it. But you also don't have it so where, you know, if it's like it, taming speed is times 20, you're just, you knock out a level 150 trike, you throw one measure berry on it, and it's tamed. That, to me, that's not fun. Uh, I like the challenge. I like the difficulty. I don't like to spend hours doing it. So I have it at three. All right, let's go down here. Uh, these right here, some of these look like they're altered. They are not altered. This is the uh, standard. So uh, except for harvest amount. I have it at 3.0. 3 That's just because I'm in the really late game on my current playthrough. Uh, normally, if I'm in you know the early game mid game late game i'll go from 1.0 to 2 well 1.0 to 1.5 or to 2 or to 3 and then like that but right now i'm in the really late game so 3.0 where you really need all the metal and such like that that that's um it helps out with that so at 1.0 you'll get it when you hit a bush you'll get like two to three berries sometimes five uh depending when you hit, um go to harvest setting three you'll get about 15 berries which in my opinion, I think that works. And this will this will work out really well for you when it comes to single player, uh, because like I said earlier, you're the only one harvesting stuff. So it's not super overpowered, but it is enough so where you're you don't feel like your time is wasted. All right, uh, going all the way down here. This is more of just the pretty standard stuff. Uh, loud third person camera. If you like to be able to see your character, make sure you click this. All right. Um, these other ones, uh, they're really not that important because unless if you are hosting a dedicated server, but if you are, then having the player joined um, notify on is pretty good. Admin logging, this right here, is if anybody uses an admin command, it posts it inside the, uh, um, oh, the chat, which is really good when you're playing with other people just so you can make sure that, you know, you know what's going on. All right, enable crosshair. This one right here is what posts the big, huge crosshair on your screen. I always have this enabled just because I like it. Uh, sometimes it's actually good to not have it on. All this that's, that's personal preference. PVE mode. PVE mode is a big one because if you have PVE turned on, you're not going to get cryo sickness. All right? But when you uh, are... When, when you're uh, breeding, it makes things a lot more difficult because of how you dispatch of any unwanted babies and such like that. But if you're on PvP mode, you do have cryo sickness, and then you can just go through and just clear out everything. It's really easy. Uh, you can level up dinos really easy with uh, um, PvP mode on and such. It's just a little bit easier. Um, but it does fundamentally change how you play. But the biggest, the biggest thing is whether or not you will have cryo sickness. If you have PvE, um, PvE mode on in single player, Honestly, it's not such a huge deal. Just, yeah, it's, it's your decision, but this is what that does. All right, show map um, map player location. I always have this check check because, I mean, granted, I really don't need this anymore since I've been playing Ark for so long. But it's just always a nice, healthy reminder when you open up your map, you'll have a note, you'll have a uh, spot on there that says, "Hey, this is where you are. You are here." All right. Uh, let's see. Going down here, maximum difficulty. Yeah, of course, I have that checked. Enable PVP gamma. Yes, I have that checked just because every once in a while I will go into PvP mode just because it makes things a little bit different on certain things. Use single player settings. This one right here is, honestly, if you're going to use this, I would recommend that you don't use my breeding settings because it will break them. But if you, do, if you don't use single player settings, my, the breeding settings that I'll get into here in a little bit are really, really good for single player. So where you've you actually can jump into the game and you can get some stuff done and like you know you come home from work you sit down you've got two maybe three hours where you want to get in and do stuff you don't want to have to set up timers for a giga that's um, raising up you can get that done in the time frame 
it's not super fast but it is fast enough you feel like you you actually feel like you you invest your, your time wisely when you're jumping in and you're act you're able to do a bunch of stuff but if you use single player settings it breaks those uh breeding settings and then you can't get the imprints so i never ever use single player settings um and also because single player settings they buff your dinos uh they make the bosses less dangerous they make a uh, lot of they make your dinos better while they make the um oh the wild dinos less and i don't like that i want if you don't have single player settings checked it's almost the same effectiveness as playing on a regular server so i like to have that not checked all right corpse locator this right here is the big huge green beam that comes up when you die i like to have that uh it's Matter of fact, I think the only reason why you wouldn't want to use that is if you're playing on hardcore mode and if you die, you die. So, yeah. All right. Disable structure pickup placement collision. This right here uh, means that uh, uh, when you place things down, that uh, you're not going to have any collision. I like to... It, it, it enables you to build a lot better. So, I always make sure that that's checked. All right. Allow unlimited respects. This right here is is kind of important if you're when you get into the late game because normally if you don't have this checked you could only respect once per level. So say if you're level 115 and you uh, um, respec, you have to go to 160. That's a lot of experience <laughs> before you have to uh, before you're able to respec. So I always have that res uh, checked just so where if I need to or if I screw up on my build or if I misclick on something, I uh, a wrong button on something, then. Yeah, it's, it, I can just respec. So, once again, that's personal preference, but I, I think it's great. All right, now, when it comes to these last ones, these last ones on this list will allow you to actually come up with some really interesting custom playthroughs if you're interested. You can, if you want to go through and you want to see if you there's no taming, you can actually just disable it. So it, it, it eliminates that desire because there's always going to be that pull. You know, even if you're going through your level 50 and you're like, ah, yeah, we're doing great. But it'd be really nice to have a trike right now. And you just kind of just ruin it from there. This right here will actually just stop you from doing that. So, yeah. All right. Disable dino writing. Same thing. Uh, show creative mode. This right here uh, shows if anybody on your uh, single player, say if you're running a dedicated server, is in, single, is in creative mode. All right. Uh, allow flyer speed leveling. This right here, way, way, way back in, I believe, early 2017, maybe 2018, they nerfed the ability to level up your speed. Before then, you could level up speed freely. And a lot of people really, really enjoyed that. But if it wasn't allowed on the uh, official servers at the time, I refused to do it. So I made sure that I was not leveling up my flyer. But this right here, this is your decision. Uh, if you want to have that Argent that just endorses through the woods, there you go. This is how you do it, and you can get some really good stuff that way. All right, so uh, here we go into the advanced settings. All right, the advanced settings, the ones I use on here, um, honestly... They're not super over the top or anything like that. Then again, I don't do any over the top settings. All right, allow cave building PVE. Uh, I have that checked just because if I want to be able, when when you build your, I like to build what I call log out boxes or uh, um, respawn boxes outside the caves because inside the caves, bad things happen. And if you uh, build a respawn shack with a bed and a, a little enclosed area with a storage box, right outside the cave then you could respawn and you can go in and you can have your fun and then if you die you just respawn right out there and you can sometimes run back in and get your stuff not all the time um with with uh without the cave building turned on then the respawn shack has to be a long ways away from the cave because there's a certain amount of distance you have to go that's why i have that allow flyer carry pve this one is really really important because if you're playing on pve um, for the no cryo sickness, if you don't have this checked, you can't pick up dinos with your um, with your flyers. So, yeah. All right. Now, when it comes around to this stuff, I don't change any of that. Uh, prevent diseases. No, I want diseases because there are some achievements and stuff like that. You get it. The non permanent diseases, I disable that because that gets really annoying. You you can kill off your entire base with that. It's not good. All right. Um. Override structure platform prevention. This is another one that allows you to build bigger and better and stronger, and it just makes it so where um, when you, uh, um, yeah, this one right here allows you to build 
a lot better stuff when it comes to platforms and such like that. And I, I just like it. I think it's good. And when it comes to a uh, single player, there's really nothing that uh, putting on a, a platform saddle is going to break the game. It's not going to make it super overpowered. And not like in, say, PvP. So I'd like to have that checked. All right, increased uh, PvP respawn interval. I have no idea why it's checked. I think it's just on by default. All right, so let's come down here. Uh, world settings. Now, this right here is where things get a little bit di um, different because this is where the imprint settings are, the breeding and the imprint. And now, these imprint settings, um, I've spent a lot of time perfecting these, and these are the ones that I go with just because... Um, it, there's a huge mathematical formula when it comes from the moment you start breeding to the moment the baby um, reaches maturity and you're able to put a saddle on it. Now, if you get that mathematical formula wrong, you're not going to be able to get a full imprint on it. Or if you imprint it, it's all of a sudden just going to become this wicked overpowered thing. You're like, what did I do? So, yeah, this right here, this are these are the settings that I go with, honestly. And... If you're going to uh, mess with these, I would um, recommend that you you experiment a little bit, but also know you're probably going to be breaking a few things, at least for a couple weeks while you're doing this. It took me a long time to figure these out. All right, so mating interval is 0.01, .01, which means that they breed. There's usually about 30 seconds to three minutes in between the breed, so where they can just start breeding again. Um, the egg hatch speed, which is 30, which means that when you put it down, it's probably about five to ten minutes that the egg will uh you know it takes to incubate it it's not super long but it does take you it is a time investment but it's honestly when you come home from work and you don't want to have to spend 30 hours waiting on that egg so there you go all right baby mature speed 42.5 this one right here will give you the uh proper time so where as the baby is imprinting the um each imprint will actually, um, it's it slotted just perfectly, and it works in just perfectly with uh, the Baby Cuddle imprint multiplier, the 0 0.035. These two, the Baby Mature Speed and the Baby Cuddle Interval, they work in tandem. And if you get that mathematical formula wrong, you're going to be screwing up a bunch of stuff. So, honestly, if you, if you feel comfortable with altering it, go for it. But these are the settings that work for me, and they really, really help out. And they make it so where um, even if you, as long as you don't have single-player settings on, I just need to make sure that's clear. Don't have single-player settings on, and these will work. If you have single-player settings on, it, it, these aren't going to work for you because... Everything there is super amped up and super powerful and super uh, super fast. But if you're uh, playing without that enabled, this right here will allow you to um, fully imprint all of them. There are a couple that are really really close, and some of them um, because when you throw when you start breeding a baby, it's random. Um, the number it gives you it's set between a certain amount of time frame say like with a thyla It'll be like ready in either nine minutes to eleven minutes now if you roll eleven minutes You're screwed anyway, but if you roll in the lower end or the medium end This will help you out matter of fact thyla is one of the ones that's really really close on these guys on this setting So yeah But other than that these um, stats these settings work out really really well I want to reiterate that it's mating interval 0.1 hat speed 30 uh, baby mature speed 42.5 and the cuddle in a cuddle interval 0.035 the math works out and it works really well all right so now uh, when you come all the way down here these are some settings right here I don't mess with them you they can make some super overpowered dinos with them and I don't mess with them just because you can make some super overpowered dinos with them I don't like super overpowered dinos I like the uh, um, the option that if I go out I can die at any time all right now the day cycle speed, um, this right here, um, the lower is the longer when it comes to these. Now that's a question I get a lot. So uh, on this right here, the day cycle speed, I have twice as long a day. So honestly on my arc, I actually have a 48 hour day. All right, the day speed is 1.0, it's 48 hours. But when it comes around to night speed, I don't like night just because um, honestly it's it, it, it sucks for recording at night. If uh, so where if, when the night finally rolls around and um, that uh, I mean the full day is uh, 48 hours my night is 24 hours but it, um, night speed at 5.0 it's much reduced from that so yeah it's one fifth of 24 hours there you go all right so uh, so basically it's uh, what four and four hours 15 minutes something like that all right 
So, um, coming down through here, uh, the no respawn radius. This one right here, um, I do alter just because on single player, sometimes it can take a lot of time for certain things to respawn. So I lower the radius so where if you uh, are running by it, you have a dino park by it, it'll actually respawn a little bit quicker because just triggering that, it, it just gets infuriating sometimes. All right. And also, I'm sure everybody's seen on the, um, you know, the regular servers where somebody builds something. I don't want to use the word pillaring, but I just did. And nothing will respawn around it. Well, this right here kind of fixes that. All right, now going down through all these, these are all just default. I never, ever, ever change these. These are up to you if you want to um, change them. It's your decision, not mine. So yeah, and I'm not gonna judge going down through. Now, when it comes down to the bottom, we get down here to the very bottom, the miscellaneous settings. And uh, these, once again, these are settings that you can completely change. I don't do it, but if you do it, no judgment for me. All right, show floating damage text. I do have this on just so where I can see how much damage my dinos are doing. And it does a really good job of it. Allow custom recipes, most certainly. Uh, some of the best recipes in the game are custom recipes that you can make yourself. Allow raid dino feeding. This allows you to feed titanosaurs and bigger dinos. Uh, matter of fact, they, it was more dinos, but they changed it to just titanosaurs. So that allows you to feed them. All right. Um... Oh, all the rest of this stuff uh, is just all default. I don't change any of this. But if you do want to put an event on your uh, um, on your game, you can put in the active event here, and then it will alter that as you're going in. This will um, oh uh, it can do the config file from inside the game. All right, so that's the single player settings I use. Uh, not much has changed from last year, but I do like to make sure I get one of these out every year just so where everybody knows what settings I'm using and also what settings I recommend um, a lot of other people use. But like I said, I mean, honestly, the settings that you use, they're really personal preference. Um, fiddle with them as you will. Just know you may break a few um, things as you're learning them. Don't think bad about it. Just realize that, uh, yeah, it's your game. So, but also, also one thing I want to reiterate, single player settings messes with a lot of different things. So make sure if you're going to use that, that you use all the other stuff sparingly. All right, but that's it for the video. I hope the video helps you out. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure you click that like button. I really appreciate it. If you're new around here, subscribe. And until next time, this is Flinger Foo. And take it easy, everybody.